Hi guys, Tom Morrison here, and today we're going to show you how to improve your shoulder mobility and coincidentally, your posture by turning you into a table. Today we're going to be covering the back bend or the bridge. A lot of people rush this movement and never get the full benefits of it, so it's really important that you progressively build it like we're going to show you today. Being able to do a comfortable back bend will give you a good level of thoracic mobility, shoulder flexion, and also wrist extension. So it is a great all round movement that will really improve your lifting technique, but also your capability to be able to do handstands or more advanced bodyweight movements. Ideally, what we want to see whenever someone is doing a back bend is that they have a nice curve um, that goes along the entire spine and not just one straight point with a hinge point because that is uncomfortable but could also cause injury as well. So it's very important that you take your time with these progressions. First thing we're going to do is work on the wrists. Whenever you're in a bridge, the wrists are in quite an extended position. So what we want to do is bring balance to the joint. So anytime you're spending an extended period of time in one position, you want to make sure and do the opposite position as well. So all we're going to do is in an all fours position, have the fingertips facing forward first of all. And what Jenny's going to do is really lean her shoulders over her hands as far as she can and then rock back and forward a few times and just really put a bit of compression into the joint. And then after a few reps, you can turn the hands left and right, then you lean side to side. I'm trying to think about putting pressure through, imagine, because your, your body weight's going to be going through this um, at one point, especially when you start doing things like handstands, you're going to have your entire body weight and that is going to be the one point that all the weight's going to. So you really want to look after your wrists. Then backwards for the fingertips as well. If this was too uncomfortable, you just would keep here and I wouldn't move past um, into any other progressions until you can comfortably have all of the hand down flat in this position whenever you're stretching the wrists. And then the last one would be the fingertips pointing in at each other. So it's up, down, left and right. Keep it this way. So just think up, down, left and right, point the fingertips in all those different directions when you're stretching. And then the same thing on the backs of the hands. So Jenny's just going to flip the hands over. This is now in flexion. So the fingertips are up and you just put a little bit of pressure. So if you've never done this before, take your time with it and build it up gradually over time. If you do it a little bit every day, you'll get used to it quite quickly. And then again, left and right with the fingertips. Just rock side to side. And then backwards with the fingertips. And then point the fingertips at each other. So that gets the wrists nice and well warmed up for then moving into being able to cope with the pressure that's going to be going through them. Next, we're going to open up the shoulders in two different ways. So what Jenny's going to do first of all is place her hands on a sofa or even a wall you could use as well or a box, anything that you have that you can then push yourself back in a way to get a nice stretch and you should feel this in and around the shoulders whenever you do this. She's aiming to get her chest down to the floor if she can and just hold that for five deep breaths. So you hold until you get a nice stretch and then big deep breath in and let it back out. So do five of those and then you're going to move into more of a thoracic stretch. So what Jenny's going to do is come back up again. She's going to depress her shoulders. She's going to pull down a little bit more and then she's going to go back down into that position. And you'll notice she's not able to get as low in this position. Okay, so you should feel this more in and around the upper back rather than actually in the shoulder. So you should feel this in your thoracic spine and not so much in the shoulder. So it's two different variations. And again, you're going to hold that as well for five deep breaths. And then come back up and shake it off. Next, what we're going to do is really open up the ribs. So what Jenny's going to do is lie over the arm of the sofa and just get a nice relaxed stretch feeling from there, okay, with her arms behind her head. Then she's going to slowly try and drop her hips down a bit lower and try and increase that stretch. Think about the upper back for this one. Then when she's there, she actively tries to think about trying to do a reverse sit up over the top of the arm of the chair. And then you're going to hold that again for those five deep breaths. So big deep breath in and then let it out and try and open up the ribs even further. So now you're starting to get that real thoracic extension. This is not only great for your posture, but it also really helps with your breathing mechanics as well. So it's a great stretch to do as often as possible. Even if you have no interest in doing the full bridge, this is still a great thing to do because it really helps to open up those shoulders and improve that upper back position. 
If you feel quite limited with your flexibility, then stick with this routine for now until you have built it up consistently and you feel like you're really getting the benefits from it. So your full routine would be doing the wrists in all of the different positions, then moving into your shoulder stretches. So your passive shoulder stretch first, where you're feeling it in here, and then your thoracic stretch, where you're feeling it more in the upper back um, for the five breaths of each, and then your big thoracic extension stretch over the arm of the sofa um, for five breaths as well. So you can stick with that until you've got that consistency going. If, however, you want to move on to this next bridge progression, then that's absolutely awesome. For this bridge progression, what you're going to do is find something to put your feet on, and then you're going to put your feet on it, and then you're going to set yourself up so that your shoulders are on the ground, and you bring your arms back behind you and try and get the palms down on the floor. If you need to shimmy a wee bit with the shoulders to get a wee bit lower, that's cool as well. Then what Jenny's going to do is bridge your hips up a little bit, and then go to the top of her head, Relax in that position, change the hand position if she needs to, and then presses herself up like that. And then you're starting to integrate all of these things into this position. And then from here, she can start to relax into the breathing as well. Give yourself them five deep breaths in this position. Keep pressing up and being active the whole time. So you're getting the wrists opened up, you're getting the shoulders opened up, and you're getting a nice thoracic extension as well. So hold this for five breaths, and your goal will be to do five rounds of that and just Take your time and be relaxed with it, okay? If it feels like it's too much for you, then just keep with the original exercises, but this is a great way to progress into this um, bridge position, and then eventually you can just start to lower down what you're putting your feet onto, either using stairs or some bumper plates if you're at a gym, and just gradually, progressively build yourself up so you're able to go down lower and get the benefits of this stretch. So that is the full bridge position with regressed angle on the feet, which takes the pressure out of that hinge point in the back like we talked about earlier. If you've been lifting for years and you've trained your back in a really solid rigid position with like lots of deadlifts and squats, then you may find that this takes you quite a long time to make uh, progress with. So there's no race about it. You're not trying to rush through it. Take your time, enjoy the progressions and get the benefits from doing them all rather than just trying to jump into the full bridge as soon as you can. So take your time is the main thing with any advanced flexibility movement um, that you're doing. So the likes of back bending and the splits, just take your time, be consistent and you will see um, and that you will get the results that you want in a more sustainable way as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and let us know anything else that you would like us to cover. And thank you very much for watching.